Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm an independent consultant and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson number 77, we'll be continuing our journey of caching topologies by taking a look at another type of caching, which is called a distributed cache. And so as we saw in the last lesson, number 76, we took a look at a single end memory cache. We've also got a distributed or client server cache option. Uh, the third option is to do replicated caching. And also finally, a near cache hybrid, which we'll look at in lesson 79. And I'll tie all of these together in lesson 80 on choosing the right kind of caching topology. But for this lesson, well, let's take a look in detail at distributed or client server caching. I'm going to choose, like I did in Lesson 76, to use Apache Ignite, and I do that for two reasons. Um, one, uh, just to select something to really illustrate how this caching works. But also, uh, Apache Ignite is an open source tool that can be used in a variety of platforms and languages, um, including both Java and also C Sharp. So I figured this would be a good um, general platform agnostic way of taking a look at caching. So let's take a look at a distributed or client server cache. And so let's say that these are my three services right here. And with distributed caching, rather than having the cache in memory in each of these service components, rather I have that cache external in a server or another service. And then I have a client library in each of these service components, such as Apache Ignite, that then allows access to that cache through some, through some sort of low-level proprietary protocol, usually socket-based protocol, um, for performance. Uh, basically, every kind of caching technology allows or supports a distributed or client-server cache. And so let's take a look at Apache Ignite on what this might actually look like. And so we could also compare, if you want to, the prior lesson, number 76, to see the coding differences between doing a single in-memory data grid or database versus a distributed or client-server cache. So here, the interesting thing is we do have a separate external server or service holding that cache. And so within this virtual machine, I'm going to start up Ignite. Now, this is started external to any of my services. And so let's make sure that is started and Ignite is now started. So this is running external to all my services. Now let's take a look at the code within each service. So now that Ignite is running, here's what I do. First, I add any of the libraries needed. In this case, at the time of this recording, I happen to be using Ignite 2.7 within Java, but this could also be the DLL as well or whatever version, but add the libraries. So here, I still, like the prior lesson, still create a new client configuration, but here I create a client configuration and now I set the addresses to those particular caches that are external to me. Now, instead of starting Ignite, as we did in lesson 76, here, I'm actually going to say ignition.startClient passing in that configuration. So this is actually starting an Ignite client, and that's that client library that you saw in the diagram. Now I can say get or create a cache, and now I'm going to put in there the named cache, which is now names, and that's going to be all of the customer names associated with that. This is going to give me what's called a client cache within Ignite. And that first string in that map contains the customer ID and the second one, the name. Now, let's see how to get something. And so what I'm going to do is get the customer ID from the incoming request because what I want to do is get the name of that customer. So I grab the customer ID, which is the key, and now I also grab a new name. So let's kind of do a, both an update and a, a retrieval and an update. So I get the name to do an update, and that gives me a new name. Now, I want to get the old name as well to say, oh, I see you changed your name from Mark to William, for example. And so now I do a cache.get on that customer ID, and that gives me the old name. And then I do a cache.put on the customer ID for the new name. Now, notice the interesting thing here. This code looks very, very similar everybody, to the code we saw in Lesson 76. And if you didn't see that, I would encourage you to look at that lesson first, just to get an idea of what a single in-memory data grid actually looks like. But here, the interesting thing is unlike 
what we saw in lesson 76 with the in-memory data grid, the cache here is on the server. Although it appears that the cache is local here because I'm just saying cache.get, cache.put, what's actually happening is that information is not stored locally in memory, but rather uses that proprietary protocol to be able to get to that distributed cache. So in this case, again, we can use the same kind of mm, write behind, read behind, or read throughs that we did, uh, that we saw basically in lesson 76, but no database activity in this case is needed by the client that's all held on the server side. So this is just kind of an example of leveraging a distributed or client server cache. In the next lesson, uh, we'll see the use of a replicated cache, which is an entirely different kind of topology. And so for more information, very excited uh, to announce the Fundamentals of Software Architecture, brand new book uh, that uh, both I have been working on with Neil Ford, and that will be published on February 25th of 2020. I've provided the link there at the time of this recording. If you do go to that link, um, before February 25th, you can actually get a uh, pre-release um, view of that book, which is the first four chapters. Uh, also, um, you can go to Software Architecture Monday, which is located on my website under Lessons. Um, every other Monday, I post a new lesson in Software Architecture completely for free. Um, I also do private training as well, which you can go to the link to see classes that I teach in both Software Architecture as well as Microservices Architecture and Design. Um, I speak a lot at conferences and also public trainings, and you can go to my upcoming events page uh, to see where I'm going to be at publicly, whether it be a conference or a public training, uh, to be able to um, see some aspects of software architecture and also microservices. And so this has been Lesson 77, Caching Topologies, looking at the distributed cache. In Lesson 78, uh, we'll continue our caching topologies journey by looking at replicated caching. Again, my name is Mark Richards, and thank you so much for listening.